that. But suffering, well, we don't know. Um, cholesterol. The main thing here is high cholesterol, we've all heard of it, it's a type of fat. If you have too much of it, eventually it can lead to coronary heart disease and stroke. Um, now, a simple little thing for you guys, a simple little thing. This is where we work as a team. Set goals 
word called fiber. F-I-B-E-R. At, um, at the university, something else the students notice about me is that whenever they come into my room, on the desk they see a lot of fruit. <laughs> fruit. Um, every day I bring about six pieces of fruit, apples, bananas, oranges, and I set them up on my desk with my healthy salad sandwich. And I put them there deliberately so all the students and teachers can see what I'm eating. And they do, don't they? People always walk past, you know, and they notice this beautiful array of fruit. Um, I eat lots of fruit and vegetables. Now, here's the reason. Fiber. When you eat fruit and vegetables, brown bread, brown pasta, brown rice, it's broken down in the stomach, but it's not broken down completely. It gathers together into like a little sticky ball, and then it goes through your intestine. As it goes through your intestine, the fibre, it grabs onto all the bad stuff that is in your intestine. Bad stuff, processed foods that we eat more and more of at the supermarket. It grabs onto all this stuff, and when you go to the toilet, whoop, how's it, how it goes? It sounds funny, it sounds funny. Now here's a question for you. This is what I tell my students as well. How many times every day should you be doing a number two? How many times in one day should you be doing a number two at the toilet? Once a day. Once a day. Three times a day. Any events on three times a day? Ten times a day. <laughs> you only go once every two or three days, that means the processed foods, which are actually poisonous in the long term, they have more time in your intestine, and if you do this for 20 or 30 years, it leads to the big C, cancer. So this is a big reason why I have fruit, vegetables and gallons of water every day. And I go once every day. If I don't go once a day, I stop and think, what am I get? Am I not eating enough fruit and veggies? Am I, am I drinking not enough water? Or am I stressed? When you get stressed, you don't go. So that's why. I remember my father, this is a funny story for you. Whenever my father went to the toilet, he would, he would always take something to the toilet with him. Many men take this thing to the toilet with them. A magazine, thank you very much. Um, now, why did he take the magazine? Stress relief. Not to look at the magazine. Um, stop it. Yeah, he went there just to take his mind off of this, and then he would go to the toilet. So there's a reason for everything I'm telling you. Good. Okay, let's have a look. Um, blood pressure, we mentioned 120 over 80 is perfect. If the 120 gets to 140, you need to check this. You need to monitor this carefully. Again, blood pressure will go up as you get older. If you don't exercise enough, if, you don't, if your diet is not good, it will start creeping up. But there's no reason why you can't have a blood pressure of 120 over 80 when you're in your 60s. No reason at all. And there we go. High blood pressure characteristics of people. Stress, overweight diabetes, high cholesterol, salty diet, they rarely exercise. Now what I'll do, we'll skip this one, we'll go straight on to this. A bit of a summary. Healthy eating tips at work. Eight glasses of water a day when you're at work. Get rid of the soft drinks. Never skip lunch. This is a big one. Many people when they get busy, they say I don't have time for lunch. Interesting. If you skip lunch, what are you more likely to eat during the afternoon? Junk food. I do the same thing. 
all of a sudden when you don't have lunch, you're walking past the coffee shop and you have a better grab one of those muscles. Normally you wouldn't have the muscle, so never skip on lunch. Question down the back. The risk of skipping breakfast? Yes. Um, well done. Uh, many people as well, they skip breakfast. The most important meal of the day for most of us, if you work during the day, is breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. Now, if you, you should be having three meals a day. You should be having three meals a day. If you skip a meal, something interesting happening in something interesting happens inside the body. One, you find you want to start eating junk food more. But also, the funny thing is, if you skip a meal, it actually slows down the engine inside that burns all the food. I call it the engine inside metabolism. It's really strange. But if you have three regular meals a day, it keeps the engine going quickly, and the engine is what burns the calories. So I know that some women, and some men as well, they think if I skip a meal, I'm actually eating less calories, I won't put on more weight. The funny thing is, in the long term, I'll actually start putting on more weight. So my suggestion, never skip meals, particularly breakfast or lunch. Breakfast, ideally fruit, like a fruit juice. Have a coffee if you like, but have a couple of pieces of fruit as well. If you have a choice between an orange juice and an orange, which one is better for you? Orange. The orange. Fiber. A lot of the fiber has been like squashed out of the orange juice. Yeah. So always have a piece of raw fruit if you have the opportunity. When you have vegetables, when you're cooking vegetables at night, Put the vegetables in the meal at the very end so they are still crispy. Crispy means they still have a lot of the good stuff in the vegetables. If you put them in at the very start, they will be messy, soggy. They're giving you very little benefit. You want them to be crispy. Good. What have we got there? Whole grain, fibre. Good. Maybe a salad sandwich for lunch. Brown bread. Excellent. Um, raw fruit and veggies, lean fish and chicken. Good. So try not. I love fish and chips. I'm in Australia. This is our weakness. We love fish and chips. Um, I probably have fish and chips once every two weeks. I probably could have it once a week if I wanted to. But more often than that, you know it's covered with oil. So not a good idea. So take, make sure you're not frying the fish. Chicken. Make sure you take the skin off the chicken. I'm sure you know a lot of this. When you have meat, cut the fat off the meat. Give that to your dog. Let him have a heart attack. <laughs> Good dog. Um, you can always buy another dog. Um, eat fruit as snacks. I love snacks, so I have lots and lots of fruit. Question. Yeah, I need to say taking fruit before the meat is better than taking fruit before the meat. What's behind that? Why are you asking? Sorry, I could not hear you. Taking the fruit before the meat at least one hour or half an hour before that. What's behind that? Okay. The question was, do we need to eat fruit one hour between, sorry, before the meal? Before the meal. Um, per, oh, well, I'm not a dietitian. I'll tell you that straight away. I'm not a dietitian. But, um, Sometimes you can, some cultures, like the Chinese, I lived in China for a couple of years before I came to Saudi, I've been here almost four years now. Chinese, they like to have the fruit often right before the meal, or they might have it one hour after the meal. Um, there's not a huge difference, it depends on your stomach. Some people, this is a personal thing, some people find that if they have fruit immediately after the meal, they become very gassy, you know? Me, I have no problems, my stomach. My stomach's like a machine. Anything I put in there that's healthy, it will digest it, I don't have any problems. The most important thing is you're having fruit. You try and have some fruit at each meal, and you have fruit between the meals as snacks. If you do have a problem, you might want to see a dietitian, but 
generally, not a problem. Minimise the sugar, minimise the sugar. Eat slowly. Many people eat at a million miles an hour. When you eat really quickly, no surprise, you eat more food. Slow down. Something that I do, and again, I keep mentioning Jabba just because he, he, it was wonderful. He would always come to my office and ask for advice about all these things. So straight away, I liked the guy a lot. He, he was proactive. And he would come to my office and he would sometimes see me eating an orange. Whenever I got a bit stressed or, or I wanted to relax, I would eat an orange. Not an orange juice. Two reasons. One, because of the fibre. But what's another good reason for eating an orange when you feel a bit stressed? Vitamin C. It takes longer. I would move, push away from my desk. I would have the rubbish bin here and I would sit there. You know, oranges, you've got to peel everything off them. This was a wonderful way for me to relax. I would just focus on that orange. You know, I mean, I would spend 10 minutes eating that orange. I would force myself to eat slowly. It works. It does work. You might think you're doing good things for a Ramco by multitasking, by doing 10 things at once at your desk, but eventually you will burn out and the company will lose out. So I'm suggesting slow down. And if you have the chance, maybe when you eat, eat. Don't do anything else while you're eating. Don't do your emails, phone calls, cigarettes, and then have the sandwich. Do one thing. Enjoy eating your food. You've earned it. Deserve it. Okay, we're doing well. Uh, very quickly, here we go. Last time we're going to do this. Now here, we've got a challenge. Oh, are you guys feeling courageous? Yeah, you're fine. Up you get sound. These guys deserve a surprise. Up they get, they stand up.
brother, always opportunity. Focus on one thing at a time. I love this picture. <laughs> Maybe they're not focusing on one thing at a time. I remember when I was a small boy, I used to be allowed to go up into the cockpit. It was a lot of fun when they give you a little pen. <laughs> goal setting. Stay focused on your long-term goal. Remember, opportunity. Always see opportunities. Catch yourself doing the right thing and make sure you reward yourself. You've got to reward yourself. Stress management strategies. Here we go. This might look funny, but I do this in the office all the time. Again, I just get out of my seat and I will do some of these for my arms. Very simple, very easy. And I'll do lots of stretches. When I'm doing my classes, once again the students giggle because I'm constantly doing this. I'm constantly stretching. And now, it's quite funny, I find that when I am proctoring an exam, when I have to supervise an exam, I will actually stand there watching the students very carefully and I'll be doing all my stretches and I'll be watching them. And then a lot of the students will sit there and I'll be going, <laughs> really funny during the exam. But I'm trying to teach them. I'm doing it deliberately. I'm trying to be a role model. And now they do it all the time, which is great. Um, this one. Breathe in for five, hold for two, hold for five. Really quick little thing I'm going to show you. If I put a hand here and a hand here, what I want to do, I want to breathe in so that my top hand does not move, but my bottom hand rises. Then when I breathe out, the bottom hand goes in, the top hand hardly moves. So while you're sitting there now, if my bottom hand moves before my top hand, it means I'm doing deep breathing. Deep breathing is what relaxes you. Breathing up here is what you do when you're stressed. So I do this as well. Just quickly try it while you're sitting there. Try. Just take a few deep breaths. Concentrate and see if you can get your bottom hand to move more than your top hand. So again, what I do is I sit at my desk, I breathe in for five and I breathe out for five. Good. Destructive habits, our last little section, just a couple of slides. You guys have been doing very well. Well, what's this guy doing that's wrong? Say, yeah, you yeah, better son, so. Look at that ladder. Looks like a cheap ladder. He should have a much stronger ladder. Yeah. <laughs> well done, electricity in the water. That's the problem. Boy, oh boy. Hopefully you never see this. If you do see it, well, be aware of it. Now, Smoking. Your heart rate increases by how many beats per minute after you smoke one cigarette? Now your heart rate should be about 70 to 80 beats in one minute. As you get fitter, your heart rate goes down. But after you smoke a cigarette, up it goes. What do you think? Hey, hands up when you think hey. No, that's obviously wrong. B. No. C. D. You are correct. That's incredible. That is amazing. What that, you're thinking, who cares? That's giving my heart exercise. <laughs> That's really scary logic. As you get fitter, your heart beats less. I'm reasonable.